This is a podcast of 98FM's Dublin Talks. Remember, catch the show live Monday to Friday at 10 a.m. 98FM's Dublin Talks with Adrian Kennedy. 98FM. And you worked in uh, Jack White's with uh, Catherine and Tom Nevin. Um, yeah. By all yeah. accounts, and in fact, I met him many, many years before that, um, only once. Um, and he he seemed like a gentleman. That would be my impression of him. But you're saying that's exactly what he was. That That is exactly what he was. I got my first job in Jack White's Inn at 17 years ago. And um, you lived in and you kind of did a bit of uh, catering and stuff like that. So I went out there and um, I was there for a while. And he was an absolute gentleman. He was lovely to his staff. He was a very good employer. You know. He, and what about her? What about her man. by comparison? All I can say is the woman is evil. It's it's not surprising that people would have that um, kind of mentality online, but although they might not know her, but she was very very um, abusive to the staff. Very abusive to Tom in front of the staff, both behind the bar and on the floor walking around. She was constantly constantly you know being very rude and abusive towards him and just gave him an awful life from what i could see and that, when I was walking there and that was just from the outside looking in that was that was from the outside looking in like one week um tom and the staff were having a great time after work was over and we were all chatting and she got annoyed by that and said that's it the tip jar is gone then off she went and she took the tip jar away. You know, it was little things like that. So the tips for the week for the bar staff and the floor staff were all gone. You know, she she did things like that all the time. Let, let me ask you, when you found out, as somebody who knew Catherine Nevin, when you found out that she had been convicted of orchestrating the murder of her husband, did that surprise you? No. Really? No. I mean, as soon as I found out that that man was dead, I immediately I thought, I wonder if she had anything to do with that. That was my very first thought when that happened, was, you know, they said it was a burglary gone wrong, and I thought, I wonder if she had something to do with that. Just out, just out of spiteful. Like, Tom, like, he just stayed in and he worked all the time. He never really did anything, never went out and socialised. She socialised in the pub and outside. She did what she wanted. She spent what she wanted. She had the run of the place. There was no need for her to kill him. Why she did that, I have no idea. Because she basically did what she wanted. She, when I, uh, as a live-in staff member, mm. um, there was a stairs. You went up the back way, and there was uh, other people living in as well. She slept in her own room on the right at the top of the stairs, and Tom stepped down in the staff quarters. Like down the back in the staff quarters, like. What was your reaction? I, you told me your reaction when you found out she'd uh, been involved in orchestrating his murder. What was your reaction when you heard she'd died yesterday? I was glad, delighted, and I know I actually my mother myself has cancer. It's a it's a terrible thing. It takes a terrible toll on you. But I would understand why Peter Caller would say, "Oh, well, I'm glad she got cancer. Now, cancer is horrific. Mm. It is horrific. Now, my mom's doing okay at the moment. She's doing well. But I can understand why somebody would say that because, you know, she actually put him through an awful lot of mental and emotional suffering before she killed him for years domestically, like, you know. So, like, I don't understand when she could do whatever she wanted mm. she could spend what she liked do what she liked she could bring men up to our room okay so, so you can understand why people uh, reacted uh, the way they did to her uh, death it's a fascinating insight as uh, somebody who lived in the same house as or the same building as Catherine Nevin for a period of time. Thanks very much indeed, Anne, for your call. The show getting Dublin talking. Every morning from 10. Adrian Kennedy. Dublin Talks on 98FM.